Welcome back to the Sim Project, everybody. Sitting on the ground here at Toronto Pearson up at Signature Aviation uh, in the Vision Jet. Now I'm still flying uh, 2020, so this is the Flight FX Payware Vision Jet, not the freeware one for 2024. And uh, yeah, let's take a look at the panel. So this is my jack of all trades generic uh, glass cockpit. Got a Garmin. G1000, a G1500, and a couple old Satec panels, and my Bravo yoke with a tablet mounted on the front of it. It's done me well for well, almost two years now I've been using this. But I think it's time to upgrade, and I think it's time to really put the wheels down and get the proper Vision Jet panel built. So let me jump over to the uh, design computer and let me show you what I got going on. Okay, before we get started, let's look at a real vision jet. So this is a real vision jet. I was sitting in back at Cirrus Life back earlier in the year. Um, the video is on the channel if you want to see that. I'll put a link to it here and I'll link it at the end of the video actually. So you can see vision jet, two G3000s, and then it's got three, I don't know the whole acronym, it's a G580. And uh, then we got an air conditioning control at the end and uh, autopilot below that. Now this is what we're going to start to work on first. There's another picture of it a little better. Some zoomed in shots they let me take. And uh, down the side of the aircraft and looking in. Okay, let's start with the 580. I've already created one of those uh, on the printer upstairs right now. Actually, two more are running off as we speak. Uh, I got to get the resin printer out to do the knobs and the buttons. And uh, with this one, what uh, what I've got and what I've gone and done. Real small circuit board over here. Uh, for mine, I did custom make the original. Uh, however, the buttons don't line up quite perfectly. There's an issue with the way the drill holes are spaced on the circuit boards I had. So I went ahead and I ordered the custom circuit boards. I, I'll link all these designs here the uh, in the video description. But this design does come with the custom circuit board design. Uh, I think the place I used, you had to order a minimum of five boards of each style. And I think they were like $3 for five boards. Now I'm going to use three of them. I do have somebody that I think is going to want the other two. So unfortunately I won't have any extras to, you know, maybe sell off an eBay or something after the fact. Uh, so that's where we start. We're going to get that one first. Uh, and then we're going to look at the air conditioning panel. This is a new one that just come up. Somebody posted here in the last few weeks on Thingiverse. Um, see, we have the nice buttons and everything to go with it. Looks like, uh, I don't think these are backlit in real life but I do have a trick to resin print those and then to color in the lettering. The only thing, of course, with this is we got temperature and fan control. Um, I might try and make a sticker of some sort, but I, you can't exactly 3D print the multicolor. At least I can't with my printer. Uh, I do know a couple people with some uh, bamboos. Maybe we can get creative. Then, of course, we have the switch back across top. Another design somebody's put up on Thingiverse. Uh, all the switches, battery one, two, everything. Uh, the only thing with this one is that checklist knob is wrong. The checklist knob on the real aircraft is more like a, more like your mouse wheel. It's a little rubber wheel that scrolls with a push click. Uh, I'm going to modify this design and I found an actual mouse wheel system that'll fit in there. So I'm going to modify it to put a mouse wheel on that. And when I, once I get that complete, uh, I will put this on thing versus a remix. I'm also going to cut it up here a little smaller. This one I believe was printed and then laser cut to give all the lettering. Uh, I'm going to split it in a couple key spots and probably make it uh, resin printable because it's easier to color to get those white lettering done nicer uh, on the resin printer. So looking at the autopilot now, this is the uh, GFC 500 Garmin autopilot, which is what's in the Vision Jet. It's also in the new Cirrus uh, SR22 uh, G7. And uh, yeah, so this originally was done, this design for a filament printer. Uh, the person who put this Remax up, they've redone it to do on a resin printer. I do have a small resin printer. Uh, you can't see it. It splits right, uh, I think it splits right through the middle of that green LED, the two parts, because it's a little too big to fit in a standard resin printer. However, what they have done is all the lettering is recessed, all the lines are recessed. So resin print it, you get that nice sharp recessed line. And believe it or not, you take a little bit of white silicone and uh, water it down and just smear it through. It packs into the letters, you wipe it off, a few hours it dries up, and that's how you get this really cool looking uh, white lettering. Now, of course, what are we going to put all this stuff in? Well, I found this thing. Um, it's not showing it here. There is a module below this for the 
autopilot. My uh, internet browser is a little slow down here. There we go. So that's the complete system. So you got your 3G 580s. You've got your ventilation heat control and autopilot on the bottom. And with the original, you can see that is that switch panel in question. So this all goes together nicely. Now this wasn't free. I mean, it cost me 10 bucks. It's pretty close to being free. And uh, there's four sections to cross the top. Each one of these sections on my Ender 3 or my CR10 are just over a day and a half print time. So we're talking what, 30, almost 36 hours or 30 hours sort of thing is what it was, I think, per piece. Um, again, like I say, I got a couple friends with some bamboo uh, P1Ss. Maybe I'll see if they can run one off. I am going to upgrade myself to a P1S probably around Black Friday. Now, of course, the next thing, back, to, we'll jump back to these pictures. So that covers the lower panel off. What about the G3000s? There is not a good G3000 out there in either a payware design or a freeware one on Thingiverse or similar sites. This is the closest one I found. Now, these are pictures are not very good here. This one does have a printed circuit board option. I have gone ahead and I've ordered five of these boards. Um, I'm going to use two, so there might be a few left once I get to building it. And if I do have some left and I'm going to put them on eBay or sell them privately or something like that, I will make that part of that video. But yeah, this one's been up for a while. Um, it's hard to see maybe here in the picture, but as you can see, the buttons on this one, the two end buttons, um, they've got the designer. He curved those, and in the real world, they're not curved. So I've gone ahead, I've modified the design and made them rectangular like all the others. Now, of course, the other thing too is on the Vision Jet, as you can see, the G3000s don't have those buttons. This is where I'm going to get a little bit of modification going. And uh, I'm going to put the buttons on there. That's going to raise this probably an inch, both of these. And when I get into developing a glare shield, that's going to change those dimensions as well. But... I do like to fly a couple other aircraft. Um, I do like to fly the TBM, uh, the SR-22. Those aircraft do have the buttons across the bottom. So this way it doesn't kind of lock me completely into one aircraft. And something else I've done is you can't see it on these buttons here. And I don't have a picture available in real life. But uh, if you look at a real G3000 with the buttons, those buttons actually have a, a lit um, arrow. So I've gone ahead and I modified the buttons to give it that triangular arrow as well. So that's the plan. That's the goal. Get this upgraded by Christmas and get into a more realistic vision jet. Now, yeah, of course, we'll have to replace the honeycomb yoke. Um, and I can't remember who makes it. Somebody makes a real nice Airbus side stick. And that's probably what I'll do. I'll pick one of those up there, up here in Canada on Amazon. They're literally like 175 bucks something like that. So that's not a bad price. Pretty good stick from what I've heard. And I'll come up with some sort of armrest here on the side uh, to mount it in. And uh, yeah, it would be really cool. I'll put a picture up. Um, Carl over at uh, 737 DIY Sim, he's actually made a 3D printed shell for a 737. So my CAD skills aren't that good. I am working on them. I'm uh, working on uh, with SolidWorks, actually. A lot of people use, you know, um, Onshape or Fusion, things like that. I'm going with SolidWorks strictly because that's what we use at work. And I mean, I have to buy my own copy. I can't get one from work. But if I'm going to, learn a CAD skill and a CAD software. Probably learning the software we're using at work would probably help my career development better at work. So I'm going to go with SolidWorks. But yeah, it would be really neat to design a nice big 3D print shell. But I think what I'll do is maybe I'll come up with something out of wood. As you can see, the Vision Jet's got some pretty big windows in it anyways. Let me back the zoom up here a little bit. So the aircraft's all windows. So maybe we just try and build something like just that frame to sit back here on my side right here. So anyways, um, that's the update, and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you follow along. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.